I was so struggling with this topic when I was learning it because I did not know the Li Ateru. Li Ateru is not popular. Not all books cover it. In, and in fact, this book doesn't. I have all those notes in Canvas, so don't have to be afraid uh, to copy it. But I found this Li Ateru rule and I was so happy. It was kind of too late though. I was already a teacher. But Li Ate tells you what to choose to be you. Duh. I was struggling so much, especially with hardcore integrals. There's five choices. You choose them all and nothing works. Liate tells you what to choose. So I'm surprised not all professors teaching it. I always do. Do any of you know Liate as a different uh, way? I think Indian students know. It has different, right? Well, I went late. Like late. Without yeah, without inverse or inverse girl first. Mm -hmm. uh, we checked, it's correct. So I, last year, Indian students told me, and I checked, it works too. I will mention in a second why. So the idea of liate is uh, if whatever you see first in the list, that's going to be your you. No, have to think too much. Isn't it amazing? If you see log, let me give you some examples. Ln of x plus 5. Let me know if you don't like any of my colors. I think green is not good. Let me put Ln of x plus 5. Choose that to be you. Nice. Log usually is a very good choice. Inverse functions, that's kind of like arc sine, arc tangent. Choose that to be you. So uh, Indian students told me that they reverse it and they have inverse first. That because those two are complicated, they both complicate, whatever shows up, that's a good choice for you. And it works both ways. Algebra, you know, x cubed plus 7. Choose that to be you if you don't see log or inverse. If you don't see log or inverse or algebraic functions, then tricks showed up, hopefully or not. Tangent, sine, choose that to be you. And the last choice is exponential, <coughs> e to the x plus 5. That's going to be your last choice. You will see it doesn't really help anything because exponential function, when you differentiate, gives you itself. And we want something to be changed. So that is Liate, magical idea. I'm very, uh, very lucky to know it, to save so much time on the test specifically. It saves lots of time on the test. Do you remember what the substitution rule was undoing? Chain, Chain rule. rule. Integration by a part undoes product rule. Surprisingly, it's harder to undo the product rule. And I'll review product rule in a second. It's harder to undo the product rule than chain rule. So the formula is integral of u dv. That's an ugly box. Integral of u dv equals uv minus integral v du. Will I require you to remember this formula? No. Substitution rule in integration by parts is a method. I don't mind if you don't remember the formula. I need you to know how to do it. I think I have video proving this as a theorem. If you want to check it out, it's fun. But I will not require you to remember it. I need to know that you can do it. So officially, it looks like this. Integral has a product inside of it. And we need to undo that product. f of x is multiplied by the derivative of g of x, g prime, dx. We're going to call one function is u then everything else will be called dv. That matches this formula, integral of u dv matches. Now we have integral of u dv, that's a product. Integration by part takes hard integral and breaks it into two parts. Product of f and g, not g prime anymore. So that is going to be following this formula original u, but now v, not dv, so we're integrating, minus integral of v du, this part. v is still g of x, you can copy it. So basically we're copying it twice, as you can see. And then we have du, so we're differentiating f. Let me put it in a completely different color, like purple. f prime of x dx. That's the official formula. It's the same thing as the formula in the box. I'll put this one also in the box. Oh, let me 
assign the last part. The last part is integral of v, and all this thing is du. Do you have problems with seeing my v versus u? Let me know if at some point they look the same. You better tell me, and then I will fix it. I sometimes do like this. In the calculus three, we have vectors. They will be everywhere. U, V, U, V, everywhere. Yes. How could you prove this? Yeah, I wrote a proof. Um, I recorded my proof in the video. And also, the book has a proof. Yeah. In the pure math class, we prove it in class. In applied, which is math for engineers, we do more examples. It's like applied idea. I'm talking about one, uh, 270 to 71 class. Let's do the example. Uh, it's kind of easy just to do that. But, oh, let me write the idea. Idea is to obtain, to obtain a simpler, simpler integral. Via, via means using, right? Via integration by parts. Integration by parts gives you two parts. One part is ready. You don't have to do anything about it. It's done. And another part, hopefully, a simpler integral than we had before. That is the idea. Also, feel, please ask me if you don't understand any of the English words. That was my problem as a student, especially in graduate school. There were lots of math, English words that nobody taught us because nobody teaches you words like integral and stuff in English. So let me know. It's easy for me to explain. <coughs> Example. Do you know how to say integral in Russian? Integral. X sine x dx. Here's a classical example for the test. We do x sine or x cosine or x log. It's a very classical thing to do. Or x e. So why this is not a substitution rule? I don't understand. Looks exactly like what we had before. What's, what's the big deal? There's nothing here. Looks like chain rule and? Uh, there's, no function there's no function inside of the function. Very good. There is no part that looks like derivative of another part. Also way to say it. Very smart. Thank you. Two functions have no relationship between each other. So that's a product. Let's call it, let's kind of like make sense. Product. So we need to undo the product, right? We need to undo a product of two functions that have no relationship. X and sine X not related, at least not in real numbers, I guess. So now when you decide it, you need to do integration by parts. Let me. Soon we're going to have so many methods by parts. We will have to sign them. Well, you don't have to, but I like to sign them to, to show me in my notes, oh, I use integration by parts. So your first step is the same as in U substitution, choose U. But now you have a hint. It tells you what to choose from the table. Liate. Do I see log? Do I see inverse trig? I see what? Algebra. Algebra is X. And then trig will be my next choice. So I already know that this, let me put in the red, this will be U. And the cool part that everything else becomes dv. It doesn't have a choice. So it's kind of no thinking here. The moment you choose u, everything is a leftover. You choose, it's just dv now. Here's a new notation for you. So let's concentrate. If you wanted to wake up in the class, this is a good moment to wake up. This is a good moment because we do new notation. Let u be x. <laughs> du is what? 1 dx. If u is x, derivative is 1 dx. Same process as before. Step away a little bit to the right and write down dv. dv is not a choice. It's a leftover. Sine x dx. That's what the formula tells us. The formula here says whatever is u is right in front of dv. So there is no choice there. The tail. The tail is dv. Here is your tail. And now you integrate dv. V is the integral of dv. What is integral of sine? Plus or minus cosine. Which one is that? Minus. minus. You differentiate quickly. That's how you check. And this is a new notation. It's a box. 
And it's a cool box because you differentiate on the left side and then you integrate on the right side. So your brain will be first refusing it and then feel satisfied that you become so good at this, you do both things at the same time. But then be careful, sine and cosine, integrating, differentiating, not the same thing. Same with x, x squared over 2 or 1. So make sure your brain doesn't mix it up. And now, for people who are visual learners, and we have lots of students who are visual learners, including me. I don't remember the formula, but I remember visually how to do it. Cross product minus bottom product. That's how I learned. It's amazing. So it's easy to remember. Even if you don't remember the formula, you know how to do it. And because it's a method, I don't mind. You just know how to do it. So cross product means u times v. And that's actually how the formula looks like. u times v minus integral v du. Cross minus bottom. x times minus cosine x. That's the cross product. Minus is part of the formula. Make sure you don't forget that. That's part of the formula. Integral of the bottom product minus cosine x times 1 dx, like so. Don't mess up the signs. Don't forget the integral. Don't forget parentheses. Mm, everything. Parentheses matter. Equal minus x cosine x. That's just nice. Plus, minus minus gives you plus, integral of cosine x dx. Here it is. Voila. We have the piece that is ready and the easier integral. That's integration by parts. It gave us two parts. And that means it's successful. We were successful, you were successful, and the method is successful. If the second integral is still hard, usually it means you have to do it again. Or you have to do your substitution in this method. So the methods will be combined into each other in a couple of weeks. Let's finish. What is the answer? Minus x cosine plus what? Plus sine. And double check the sign of this sign. Don't forget plus c at the very end. This is integration by parts for you. A new method with new notation. I will make a couple uh, comments, but uh, do you have questions? There are usually at least two, three questions at this particular moment. Don't be afraid to ask. Did you blink? And now all of this showed up and you have no idea what's happening? Yeah, tell me. What do you want me to repeat? I can do that. It's very easy. Yes. Are we going to have the same situation as the last, uh, last normal last Definite time? Definite integral? On the outside of the uh, dx, like the top table or whatever. Oh, that's one. Yeah. Uh, not here, actually. So this method is less creative. That's why students kind of like it more than your substitution. Your substitution has struggles. The question was, do we have to figure out the constant like last time, one half shows up? No, this one is more straightforward, but it requires integration after integration. I mean, they use the formula first and then integrate. So you will like it. I think the first two chapters, usually students like them. That's a good comment. Other comments, questions? So usually people ask uh, several things. When we integrated this thing, when we integrated dv, we got uh, v. Why we did not put, put why did we not put plus c? Because we usually do. And there are several explanations. Not only it's gonna cancel out because it's a negative sign, so you multiply and then minus this, blah blah blah. But also it's better to put one big c at the end which takes in all the c's in the process. It's like a mother c. It absorbed all the c's. In differential equation class, you will see it a lot. Every step will have c1, c2, 3c, c4. People just don't care about it. At the end, they put one big fat c. That means all of them. Because c means arbitrary constant, which also means sum of all the previous c's. So that's why nobody cares, which is also a good point when it comes to Oh, in the next example, we'll have negative C. Nobody puts negative C. It's C, and it has all the signs in it. Any questions? I, yes? What would we do if this were like definite integral? That's a spoiler alert. We're going to do definite integral. It's going to be very interesting. And so uh, let's see if we do it right now. Oh, we're going to do it. Oh, wait. Do we have time? Yeah, we have time. Um, actually, yeah, do we have time? So uh, 
Def integral will be also easier. Also, I wanted to make a note. You see this notation? Some of you learn it, oh, just a second. Some of you learn it differently. Notation, maybe you made a table, a list. I don't mind at all. Whatever your teacher taught you, whatever you like, do that. So it's not like I'm, I'm very, it's not like I'm very angry about this thing. Like, no, you have to do my way. Doesn't matter. Whatever you learn, I'm very open-minded about people's math. If it's correct, it's correct. But if it's wrong, I will let you know we can fix it. Yeah? Yeah, so negative C is still C. It's just minus C. We call it C1. But then why even bother? That's a, you get used to it in DFQs, differential equations. Everything there is C, so nobody matters. At some point, constant is not as important as everything else. So finally, we can integrate log. Let's do it. Let's integrate log. Uh, let me see quickly. Keep getting used to the timing. We still have a little bit of time. So when you integrate, uh, before we integrating log, I wanted to mention that you know we can check if the answer is correct. It's kind of important in this case. We will differentiate this result. Yeah, I wanted to review for you product rule. I, something tells me you don't remember product rule because it's been a while and it's fine. It's okay not to remember, but you just need to review. So I'm differentiating the result. That requires me to use product rule. In my classes, I teach product rule as u times v, which have nothing to do to u substitution integration by parts. Again, u and v just pop on notation. Nobody cares. Sometimes it's u and w in some countries, or v and w, which is kind of bad because it's like, like this. Hard to see the difference. Just don't use all. <laughs> but actually, I'm not going to take points if you do. I really don't care. So derivative of minus x is minus 1. Copy v. That's product rule plus copy minus x, derivative of cosine is minus sine x. And that's, we finished just the first derivative of this product rule. Now, so it's like that. Sine gives you cosine x and c gives you zero. This is supposed to give me whatever was inside of the integral, which is x sine x. I don't see that. <laughs> that looks horrible. Well, maybe it does not look horrible. Minus cosine and cosine goes away. And the answer becomes minus minus gives you plus x sine x. Yay. Check mark. So technically speaking, on your exam, you have multiple choices. You can differentiate on them all and match the result. But it takes more time than actually integrating them somehow. And you can make a small negative mistake. Then it all kind of goes down the drain. Yes, I think it's good. What do you think about this? We're going to continue integration by parts next week. But u substitution? You can totally finish it. In integration by parts, you can go halfway through or more. And uh, you will, f I think you'll feel satisfied with these methods. They are pretty straightforward, not easy, I'm not saying that, but they're very straightforward. If you get them, you become good at it. Questions, ideas, suggestions? Your homework is due Wednesday, and I have a second homework. Do not get sick during the long break. Everyone's coughing uh, or spreading COVID again. But this one is very challenging. Uh, I had two people I know who got hospitalized, one of my friends and another person. So just be careful with that. And I don't travel. I highly recommend everyone will be traveling on Monday. So maybe you should not. <laughs> don't join the crowd. 